Hi everyone and welcome to our Facebook Live today. Yes, we are so excited. <laughs> Be excited! Yay! Keep going. Okay. We are so excited. We have a special um, guest, a quilt artist um, here, Susan Korber. Um, you, know, you know what? Let's just get started. Let's bring her on in. All right. So Susan, if you'd like to join us. Come join us. Have a seat. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much for being here with us today. Thanks for having me. Yes. yes we are so excited. Um, we saw the, the quilt at the Dallas show and we just fell in love with it. And we are, we're honored that you were able to come in and you're going to talk to our audience and then ask your questions about it. Yeah, and share some of your amazing knowledge with us. Yeah. Because it's, yeah. it's a spectacular quilt. It is. It definitely is. So, um, Thanks so, so yeah. how long have you been quilting? I've been quilting for 16 years. Oh, wow. Long time. Can't believe it's been that long. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what kind of machine do you quilt on? I quilt on a Gamble Classic. Okay. Which I understand Gamble doesn't make anymore. <laughs> hear that. When I got my machine, the Statler had not yet um, come into being. It was still being worked on. Um, but I love my little machine. I just wouldn't trade it for anything. So you do all your quilting without a stitch regulator. Right. That's amazing. Wow. When we get close up, you guys, you're going to be like, I cannot believe she does that without yeah, it. She's great. Yeah, lots of talent. Lots yes. of talent. Um, what got you into quilting? Um, a coworker. She came in one day at work with um, a book and we that's how I I met her yeah mm -hmm. and she said there's this great quilt store I know of if you want to go sometime and I, I was going quilt store what is that? <laughs> and I just fell head over heels in love with it and just it, you know it it's an all-consuming passion it yeah. took over my life I completely. understand <laughs> So um, you've been doing it for about 16 years. Have you been doing it that long for a business? Or how long have you been doing it as a business? Um, yeah, pretty much when I got it, um, I was trying to practice and get good so I could feel comfortable doing customers' quilts. Right. But people had really different ideas. They're like, yeah, I need this by Christmas. Can you do it now? <laughs> yeah, no, so I, I understand that. So I jumped that. in. That and I took a <laughs> class with, I mean, I took a lot of classes with Linda Taylor. And she said at the end of the very first one, well, you are ready to quilt for other people. And I just thought, she's just being nice to me. <laughs> 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 so I phased out of my job. You know, I went part time and then I worked less and less. And then just like in a year, I was full time. Awesome. That's wow. amazing. Amazing. So what part of the quilting do you like the best? Do you like freehand, custom, pantograph? What's your favorite type? I love custom quilting by far. Okay. When I first learned how to quilt, Harriet Hargrave's machine quilting book had just been updated. And that's what I thought all quilting should look like. So um, the friend who got me into quilting got her quilt back from the quilter and I expected it to be custom quilted and it wasn't. And I was just really let down. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all the quilts in that book, I just thought were so breathtaking, and I couldn't wait to do that kind of thing. Right. So in my business now, I will do the occasional overall, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I do that freehand as well. Okay. Um, and I would, and the bulk of my business is custom work. Okay. okay. Tell Good us job. a little about your business. Tell us your business name. Susan Corbett, Custom Machine Quilting. Okay. Sure. And we can find you on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And we'll also link her Facebook into the feed afterwards, so you can find her there, see some of the work she does, contact her because she does quilt for the public. All right, so you know what we're going to do now? You know, the Corey and Susan are going to get up and she's going to tell us a little bit about her inspiration for the quilt, show us some things, how she was inspired to do the quilt that we're about to show you. You ready for that? Yeah, let's do okay. it. to start off what do you have a name for this quilt? Um, yes it's okay. called nature. Nature okay mm -hmm. perfect. What was your inspiration for the quilt itself? Well my friend Jennifer who was a roommate in college commissioned this quilt okay. and um, I thought she was asking for a traditional whole cloth quilt. Okay gotcha. Uh, that little sample over there. Uh-huh. Let's get up close to that. I pinned it in over there. So. She saw that and fell in love with it, and she borrowed it for about four years. <laughs> and when she finally gave it back to me, um, I thought that's what she was talking about. Uh, but no, she had other ideas. So what did she send you to give you, I know you said she sent you some stuff to, to kind of pick your brain. She's one of those 
kind of people like me who has big notebooks full of tear sheets out of magazines, um, all kinds of design inspiration for decorating or a craft or that kind of a thing. Right. So she had these all picked out for me. Um, this was the first thing she showed me. It's wallpaper. Okay. I'll bring it up here. You can yeah, talk you about can. it. So she said, this is what I like. She said, you know, there's a stylized tree with a deer, so kind of make it tell a story. Okay. And then there was this one. She circled the parts, you know, like, oh, a spare branch with some leaves and berries and flowers and that okay. kind of thing. To so help that you, was part of yeah, it. Yeah, to help get the planning stages mm -hmm. going. She wanted it to depict Texas, so that's one of her note cards. You know, that was her style. She okay. said, don't make it too ornate. Don't feel like you have to make it pretty. So, um, so I tried to really follow what she said. Okay. So her dictate mm -hmm. to not make it too ornate. That's where I kind of had a problem because okay. <laughs> I'm one of these pile on people, not simplistic. So I think there's a lot in here to look at. Right. So when you when you you actually did some planning as well. I did an awful lot of planning. So yes. let's, let's look at some of the things that you used to plan to help okay. kind of come up with your idea. Well, I discovered, looking at my own tear sheets, uh, I had torn this out of a House Beautiful magazine a long time ago. This is a piece of wallpaper, um, and the technique used here is called grisaille, which means gray. Mm -hmm. So it's all grayscale, and I loved how House Beautiful had a color palette all ready for me yes, here. So that was her. ideal. That mm -hmm. was really good. And then, um, you know, I had all these tear sheets of what a tree actually looks like, the, you know. And then this great piece here at the bottom with all those knot holes and stuff. <laughs> okay. So, so then it looks like you moved into more of the drawing aspect on your own piece of the paper? Yeah. Okay. Um, see, this, I hung up some freezer paper on a wall mm -hmm. and section it off, you know, marking the center and the, you know, the vertical and horizontal centers and just sort of drew the basics of it right. and then transferred this to my freezer paper because uh -huh. I had to start somewhere. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then I know that you, I saw that you brought some books. So like uh -huh. if you just can't quite get yeah. it because we're not all art artists. You can get some books that don't have um, copyrights on them, right? Yes. So these are Dover publications. Mm -hmm. The year before she asked me to make this quilt, I found these coloring books at um, a booth at the Houston Quilt Show. And they just happened to have everything she had asked for, oh, cool. which I thought was great. So, so, yeah, so see, this bird right here is this bird right up here. So let me get close to that real quick. Oh, perfect. I can freehand a, an awful lot of things, but when it comes to something that detailed, you know, <laughs> that's kind of a different ball game. Yeah, so it's just getting some books and getting the ideas out of them to put on the quilt, you know. Awesome, awesome. Perfect. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. We're so glad you were here. Um, okay, so let's get into the quilt. Okay, so it looks, from the looks of it, it looks like you've done a lot of trapunto work here. Yes. Okay, and I know we were talking before we started that you love trapunto. I do. Okay, so explain to me some of the... Um, Let's focus on one specific part of it, I guess the leaves, and explain how you got that trapunto look so puffy, even though you still have that, those stitches on those leaves. Okay. On a tri on like a customer quilt, uh -huh. these would be leaves that I would just freehand. Okay. But when you're doing trapunto, you have to know where things are going to go. Right. And one of the decisions I made early on about this quilt was I thought I'd do some thread play first. Mm-hmm and then do trapunto, okay. and then quilt it like a regular quilt. Gotcha. So I just drew some leaves okay. on a piece of paper, and all different sizes, and um, just auditioned them. See, that I thought was going to be way too big. Right. So I, so I scaled them down, and really just positioned them here and there, and I tried to make some overlap. Right. Um, and so all the leaves, I think, I did with just um, one layer of high-blocked polyester. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. 
For other areas of the quilt, mm -hmm. um, say the deer. Mm -hmm. You know, he's like the main character in this story. I know, yeah, I know when I was walking past it in the, at the Dallas show, the first thing I noticed was the deer. It was very prominent because you've got the brown on top of the gray, and that's kind of where my eye went exactly mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of depth. So continue on going what yeah. you were saying about it. The eye goes to color. Right. So this fabric was really tricky to work with. It just eats color. Okay. So I had to use a lot more different colors than I thought I was going to. Right. And I wanted to make him so prominent that I ended up stuffing him with um, a lot more batting. He's got a layer of high loft poly and one or two pieces of Hobbs wool. Right. Okay. That's a wonderful bat because of the inherent loft in it. Right. So there's at least three layers of Three layers of batting right. within that deer. Wow. Uh -huh. That's awesome. I like the idea of having different levels. See, the leaves wouldn't make any sense to be too fat because leaves are not inherently puffy. Right. Okay. A deer, on the other hand, has a lot more depth and Over. volume. Gotcha. Now, I remember when we were talking about um, earlier, you said there was a lot of um, pieces on this quilt that a lot of people don't see that you wish they would. Mm -hmm. And I know you were talking about certain pieces, so you want to talk about where else on the quilt, besides the prominent features that you would want people more to focus on okay. um, that are not really seen um, due to the predominance of other pieces. Just to not miss. Right, yeah. Uh, okay, one example is the little deer right here. Mm -hmm. He's meant to be way off in the background. Mm -hmm. Um. And so it, and it really looks like it too. The yeah. way they, oh, good. they designed it. It looks like it's setting way far behind the tree. Right. right. So that's awesome. Okay, and then that snake down there at the bottom, he's got his eye on a little rat. And I think he came out really subtle. Oh yeah, I can see that. You've got the eye looking right okay. at the rat over mm -hmm. here. And you've got Trapunto on there too, it looks like. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, there's our little rat friend. And then the figure I think awesome that really nobody knows about is my little lizard way down here at the Oh bottom. my goodness, I didn't see that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought I was using really showy thread, <laughs> but it's just way too subtle. <laughs> Look at the lizard, and he just like sits on the water. Oh, that's beautiful. And I remember you saying there's somewhere in your spider web that you were talking about using metallic for a dragonfly that's within the spider web. Mm -hmm. oh, there it is. That's so beautiful. Cool. Beautiful. How did you decide to like place the you know the dragonfly in the spider web and place the lizard on the water? What makes you comes up with those ideas? That was kind of hard. Um, this quilt, you know, I spent the first six months kind of not working on this quilt. Right. I was pretty afraid of the whole thing. <laughs> I realized early on I was in way over my head. Yeah. Um, but fortune favors the brave, so yeah. I went for it anyway. Um, so I read a lot of art books. I went out and bought a stack of books to try and go to like art school right now. <laughs> <laughs> and so I read a whole lot about composition and that changed some decisions. I initially had this deer facing outward, mm -hmm. but I realized he needed to draw the eye into the center of the quilt. Mm -hmm. So that's what drove some of those decisions. Gotcha. I had initially planned to use a whole bunch of birds and my client nixed that idea. Yeah, so I put the, the cardinals birds. up there in a contrasting thread. Um, she was afraid they were going to be cute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they're cute. I think they work pretty well. Yeah. They work very well in the overall. So I just went over, I mean, I way overthought placement of everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I just put a lot of time thinking about all these different parts. So, um... What was gonna, I had this great question. Oh, I was going to tell everybody that is watching again, thanks for being on. Make us some questions that you might want to ask Susan. She is here live. She's going to be able to answer questions for us about the quilt, about the technique that she used. Um, that's what's so amazing about having her here Facebook Live is that you guys that are watching can interact with her and ask her questions. So if you have a question, ask her. We can get those um, answered for you while she's here. So why those uh, questions are getting oh, tallied up? We already have one. Oh, you do? Okay, yeah, so go ahead. How long did it take from start to finish? Oh, that was the exact question right. I was about to answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, answer, ask. <laughs> Um, well, sort of a year and a half, but a lot of that was just being afraid of it and not wanting to start, mm -hmm. okay? And, you know, one thing that really helped me a lot was having put zippers on the canvases of my machine mm -hmm. so I could put it on and take it off a lot. Because I, 
you know, I ran into all kinds of problems that took me a while to figure out. Um, and one of those, so, but if I had done it from start to finish and done nothing else but work on the quilt, I think about three months worth of work wow. is in here. That's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. A lot of work, but it turned out so beautiful. But also, but I think for your first pictorial quilt, maybe something not this size would have been a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so starting off a little smaller. Start a little smaller. <laughs> that would have been sensible. So while we're waiting on a few more people to ask questions, we'll say hi to our studio audience over here. Hi. hi. <laughs> and of course, until he's back there behind us. <laughs> but all right, wow. Just thank you. Yeah, it is a stunning piece of art, Sharon, exactly what it is. Um, they were saying tremendous job, things like that. So think of some, come on you guys, think of some questions. I know you want to know how some of this was done. And while you're doing that, I'm going to get up close to some of the other artwork in there. You know, just even the simple meandering that's going on right here. I mean, it's beautiful. I had grand plans for that corner of the quilt. And then I realized there were too many design elements in here already. So I backed off and just made it a background. So how did you determine if you wanted to do more of a open background opposed to some more of it where it's a little more dense around certain edges? Okay. Um, here I just had the sky to depict. Right. Um, without, when you, well, not just on a whole cloth, mm -hmm. but on a regular old quilt also, mm -hmm. you want to have more motif than background. Gotcha. Okay. Because it's just boring to have a whole bunch of little teeny tiny dense quilting. Right. So you want to save the little tiny stuff for like to encircle something you want to call attention to. Okay, gotcha. The motif is the star of the show. Right. So when you're background quilting an area where there's not a lot of motif there, right, a lot of negative that's when space. you want a background that is its own pretty good design that gotcha. doesn't need to be real dense. Okay, we got a couple questions here. It says, how many, uh, how many awards have you won? On this quilt? On this quilt and then in general. Okay. I think um, that's what the question is. Well, this quilt won Judge's Choice at, and a second place ribbon at the Trinity Valley Show here in Fort Worth okay. uh, last fall. It was juried into Road to California. Cool. It won third place in the Dallas show a couple weeks ago. It's been juried into Paducah, so I'm shipping it there next week. Amazing. Congratulations. Awesome. Thank huge you. Honor. <laughs> and I'm not sure where else it's going to go or if it's going to go. Um, you know, I told the client, how long can you part with it? And she said, well, I don't know. <laughs> That's her quilt. Um, so we'll have to see. Uh, another question is, what fabric and threads did you use? So just kind of a quick idea of just some of the things you did. Okay. Um, I, my client didn't want a cream colored quilt, which is what you see in most whole cloths, mm -hmm. okay? So, um, and I wanted to use cotton sateen because the sheen of it just makes a whole cloth look really, really pretty. It, it shows off your quilting really well. So I told her, go out and get two king size flat sheets that are cotton sateen. Because out there in the, in the decorating world, you can have whatever color you want. So she bought luxury linens, um, and that's how we got this made. There was just enough fabric for the front and the back and some binding. Okay. And then the thread, I just used um, some shiny polyester, and let me talk about that as well. Um, so you, you know, kind of look, looked at your thread chart to find a color palette. I was going to just go for gray scale. The art book said if you're going for gray, use everything from white all the way to black. So I thought everything in here was going to be what I was going to use. But it turned out to be way too subtle. So what I ended up with was using like these three columns because it needed more color. Okay, yeah, so I can see. The three colors columns you were, talking, yeah. you were talking about, these three right here. So you pick yes. colors okay. out of those. Right. Okay, cool. So, so I can like an Irish thread. So like yeah. Iris or Magnifico, either one of those threads would be exactly. common to what you used. Okay, yes. awesome. Um, it says, what? Uh, I, my questions are going away. They, some be possible to see the back of the quilt. Um, would it be possible to have used color for each item? 
but well, using a different color for each item. Yeah, I mean, well, yeah, it's, it's, it's custom, so if you had wanted to, you could have. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I kind of pretty much did, sort of. Yeah, if you I mean, get really close, you see a lot of different, different colors. And a yeah. whole bunch of other it's, colors. It's, it's harder to see over our Facebook Live. Um, but when you are, this quilt is stunning in person. Yeah. Um, but when you look at it um, in person, each one of these pieces um, that you know, correspond with each other are all in different colors. Yeah. Um, of course, the tree is in a darker brown and goes into lighter browns. Yeah. Um, the cardinal, you're in, starting to get into a copper um, tan brown. There's about three different, three or four different colors within the cardinal. Mm -hmm. um, over here in the falcon, is that what I'm going to call it? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> you've got two or three different browns. Um, you've got a tan, you've got a dark brown, you're going into more of a mocha color as well. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how she gave it one, that depth, but she also did uh, switch out different colors throughout the entire thing. Yeah. And we are the tree trunk. Show the, like, the silver and the, like, oh, yeah. the blues so to gray type in of In the eye of the tree all these different colors. It's a very, very light gray, and then we're going into more of a steel gray, and then we get into the black, and as well as a dark brown. Yeah, so beautiful. That was just to make it kind of realistic, like, you know, I en envision the light coming from over here. Mm -hmm. So if you want to pick up a corner of the back, we could show just like a okay. corner. This is the rear quilt where the front looks better than the back. Yeah. <laughs> There's more happening in the front. Yeah. But because you, I did a whole bunch of thread because play of the trapunto. on the yeah. front before I got to the trapunto. So the back is less remarkable because it doesn't have all the thread. I think they just want to see how beautiful the stitches are still. So gorgeous. We still have some beautiful stitching back beautiful, there. Beautiful, beautiful. Yep. How many layers of batting did you put in your trapunto? Say, let's go back to the deer. How many layers of batting and what kind? There's at least three. So Hyloft Poly, mm -hmm. which, and I bought that here, like so poly whatever it is you all carry. Okay. And then there's at least one or two layers of Hobbs wool in here. Okay. The and then wool. the back for the entirety of the quilt was um, a flat cotton from Quilter's Dream. Okay. Because this started out being a bed quilt. <laughs> <laughs> I think people who don't quilt can only fathom the idea of a quilt being for a bed, not as a piece of art. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I asked her how big she wanted it, and she didn't know. And she got a new bed in the middle of the process. <laughs> so I kind of had to tr treat the whole thing like it was a picture that I could crop down to whatever size I needed. Mm -hmm. And she wanted to know what's the rate of shrinkage going to be, because this had to be washed. I had to get, to get out the blue uh, washout marker mm -hmm. and the wash away thread mm -hmm. that I used in the Trapunto. I mean, I think I washed it two or three times. So so it shrunk up a lot. Um, if it was going to be a piece of art, if it was smaller and it was a piece of art from the beginning, mm -hmm. I think I would have gone um, with Linda Taylor's choice. Uh -huh. I love that bat. Yeah, it's a great it's a great batting for a show quilt. It hangs it nice and flat. It's a nice exactly. heavy batting. It's going to keep it nice, flat, everything straight. Right. It's a beautiful, a great batting, definitely. So this bat here that's over the whole quilt uh -huh. is really flat. Uh -huh. and uh, I mean, that's a quilt bat for a bed quilt. Right, yeah. which is what this started off being before you got really into it. Yeah, and uh, we have another question here okay. is, um, how easy is it to do Trapunto? You know, I don't think it's hard at all. <laughs> um, I know a lot of people are afraid of that, but um, it's more time consuming, but I don't think it's difficult. In fact, it gives you more practice and confidence with your motif because you end up quilting the motif twice. You know, that first round of quilting with the wash away thread is one layer, then you trim away the part that's not going to be here. Mm -hmm. And then you quilt it again with the regular thread. Right. So I think the trimming is the part that people find intimidating. I, I just happen to be a little bit fearless about that. <laughs> I've only ever cut into the fabric once. And I learned from Sherry Meineke. Mm -hmm. uh, she did that and she said, you know, that's where you just quilt over it. You just grind in some quilting and <laughs> cover up your mistake. So you it's go. not that hard. Right. Okay. Well, I don't see very many questions, you guys. You're not active today. I mean, we have her here. So if you think of anything else, definitely um, ask us some questions. Um, well, we have another one just popped up. What did you start with, the tree or the deer? The tree. The tree. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense. 
so you did you design the tree and then added all the um, the leaves and stuff to it and then you probably did you embellish it after that by adding the animals and things so you just, I knew you there was going to have to be a tree in it and I knew okay. there was going to be a deer so those were the first two things I found I looked online and found a picture of a tree that I thought would be good mm -hmm. and then I simplified that design a lot and you know I was happy that it didn't have to be completely re realistic because in any piece of art I think you have to take some artistic license mm -hmm. and with Trapunto you definitely do okay. an actual tree would have so many more leaves than this right. and I purposely left all this space in here so that each individual leaf could be seen no, it's so. definitely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Well, let's go back over here and sit down and we'll finish this up. We were so, so excited to have you. So let me get this positioned right. Sorry for all the vibration. All right. That was amazing. Yes. That quilt is just amazing. I just love it. Beautiful, oh beautiful work of art. It's gorgeous. I love the different dimensions, mm -hmm. um, especially like, you know, we were talking about how the, the eye goes to color. So looking at the deer, the tree, the spider, and then yeah. going in and finding some of those things that are kind of hidden in the background um, that you don't really notice uh, firsthand when you're not, uh, not looking for it. Yeah, so if you see this at a show, you definitely want to get up close and personal to it and see all the different detail that we, that we couldn't show here. Is there another question real quick? We have two more questions. Um, was the design drawn on before the quilting began? Well, that's a good question. Yes, in parts. I would get one piece of the puzzle figured out and then a new problem would crop up. <laughs> so, like, I didn't have all the thing all drawn out on paper. It was just like one element at a time. So you kind of work, you work in kind of different quadrants of it at a time. That's gotcha. Good. What's up? And uh, you answered this earlier, but um, how many years have you been quilting Long Army? 16 years. Okay. You've been quilting for about 16 years? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so you know what? We also have some, we have some exciting news. Very exciting So if news. you really, really love Trapunto and the look that this, look, that this looks like. Yeah, and you love it, you want to learn how to do it, you get ideas. To do it. Um, Susan has agreed to teach a Trapunto class. So. We will have all the details soon. Um, we will schedule that class, and you guys can call and sign up and, uh, and learn how to do the trapunto, learn how to do how she made that deer the way it looked. It, I just can't wait to see yeah, that class. I, I, I might peek in a little bit on the class, because I'd, I'd love <laughs> to hear some of the ideas yeah. um, and how you came up with certain things yep. to get it to look that way. All righty. So, Great. I guess. You want to, yeah, let's finish it up. Let's finish it up. Yeah. What was there a finish up? Oh, okay, oh we have another question. We do. <laughs> <laughs> <That's fine>. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long, there's two questions. Okay. okay. How long did it, did you work on your, on a, how long did she work on her quilt? I was trying to <laughs> fix it. I got you. Um, well, she said it, it, it took a total of about three months to finish it, but a year and a half of studying it to make it all Yeah, it would be three months if she was going to sit there and, and do it nonstop. every single day nonstop, um, but overall about a year and a half. And what is the one thing you learned with this process? That's a good question. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> that I, well, a couple things. That I wish I had majored in art <laughs> in college. Um, and that I would really like a drawing class. You know, uh, I, I learned quite a bit about composition, scale, proportion, perspective. Uh, from an artistic point of view, this is just a beginner effort. Okay, because there are some problems in, in there. Like, for example, um, the spider. Apparently, the spider is proportionally incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I can't tell. But I live in so. Texas. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, just. Those are in my backyard. We took a hike over, and this big spider, I'm not lying, was on my front door. Yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> proportionally correct to us. Texas. Yeah. <laughs> so, but awesome. Well, again, Susan, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. We really you. appreciate it. Um, if you guys do have a few more questions, go ahead and post, and she'll try to get to them if she can to answer those. But we are so happy that you guys were able to join us live. We have some other special quilt artists that will be joining us, you know, for months to come. So we're excited about this new feature yes. of Facebook Live. Um, and let us know how you like it. Yeah, let us know yeah. if you like it. If you like us to keep doing this. Um, uh, we enjoyed it. I love learning these new things. A lot of fun. Yeah, I've yeah. seen I've seen Trapunto work, and I've seen I've seen Linda do it a couple times. Yes. But I've never really heard in depth. Exactly. How to do it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hey, well, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next Wednesday. All righty. Bye-bye. See ya.